we think about Jesus as our leader, who is Jesus? He is our leader. We turn to John chapter 14. Uh, if you have your Bibles, I know it's one verse, but I encourage you to turn there anyhow. Uh, John chapter 14, I'm going to be reading from the ESV version, verse 6. It says this. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Let us pray. Jesus, speak to us now through your word. Lord, I pray that your spirit will communicate clearly the things that it is that we need to hear. Um, yeah, in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Jesus told us, very clear, we just got done reading that Jesus told us he is the only way to the Father. There is no other way. There is no way to get to the Father except through Jesus. There is no way. Is there any way to get to the Father except Jesus? I was expecting a much louder no, but no, absolutely not. Jesus is the only way that can lead us to life. Now, as, as, as people, and Pastor did a great sermon a, a number of weeks ago about sheep. And as sheep, as his people, we are followers. We are always going to follow something. And there's two ways that you can follow. One, you can follow, just got done saying, Jesus into life. Or two, not following Jesus, which leads to life, then it's clear that you're following the ways of the world, which leads to death. It's one of the two things that you are going to follow. And if Jesus is our leader, he will lead us into life. I want to talk about this morning, the short time that we have together, uh, two things that following Jesus does. I want to talk first about what the, the requirements it takes to follow Jesus. And then secondly, I want to talk about what it, when you follow Jesus, what does that provide? The requirements to follow Jesus. Number one, there are uh, three things here that are, yeah, three. Three things that are super important when it comes to following Jesus. Number one, we must listen. Now, we, we hear the word listen, and we know the word hear, and we hear those two words, and oftentimes in our minds we think maybe they're the exact same thing, to hear and to listen, but far be it, they are super different from each other. And we'll, let's, let's spend some time about that. When you hear something, you, you just kind of hear it. Uh, it. People that live by a train track, uh, as a train would go by, and it was honking its horn, and it's clickety-clack, clickety-clack, and you would say to that person, do you hear the train? I mean, and what would that person say who lives by the train tracks all the time? Well, I, what, get used to it. I just, I don't know. Oh, yeah, that's, that's right. There's a train. At some point, you just hear things, and you don't even know what's going on. Hearing is very passive. It's just something that you, comes in, and nothing really computes. Anyone can hear. Anyone can take in what's being said. And often when we just hear we only take in what we want. We hear something, and when we hear something that sounds good, we're like, okay, I'll have some of that. We become selective in our hearing. That's, a, that's probably not an appropriate story for now, but a, a story just popped in my head. I'm just having a, a middle-aged man moment. We can just hear it's very passive. But when we listen, when you take the time to listen, listen is very active, and requires something you have to pay attention to what is being said you must engage in what is being said you cannot just sit there and hear but if you're listening it, it calls you to action it calls you to something greater it calls you to do something about what you are listening to last week i, I talked a, a little bit about my love of hockey um don't ask me uh uh, my mind, sports are dead uh, for the rest of the year. Uh, I was in a bad mood uh, Thursday night. You can ask my family. And in the middle of this game, this elimination game, I, I took off my jersey. I crumpled it up, and ceremonially, I do this each year. I throw it on the floor, and I went to bed. And I was done. Uh, and a friend here at church, he, was, he said he sent me a text, like, don't give up. And I said, I don't want to watch garbage hockey. Uh, and simply laid my head on my pillow and went to bed peacefully. <laughs> when 
And then yesterday, I traveled in, in, to go visit some uh, students in a basketball tournament, and I usually, on a trip like that, will spend the time listening to a podcast about hockey. I, I mentioned this last, uh, yes, the last wanted nothing to do with listening to a hockey podcast because I knew that would, I would not like what I heard. I did not want to listen to these people talk about the failure of my hockey team. I did not want to listen about how Minnesota sports are always this and always that. I did not want to take that in. I did not want to listen because I knew that when I listened to that, it would be painful. Oftentimes when we listen, it, we hear something when we're listening that doesn't it rubs us it, it requires us to do something it requires us to action and maybe that's why we don't spend time listening to the lord because we're afraid of what he might say to us we're afraid of what he might say as he is our leader it's important though to listen last week we looked at luke chapter 5 and we, we read about and he had to listen to the Lord. Jesus says to Simon in Luke chapter 5, put out into the deep and let your nets down for a catch. And Simon, he answers, he, he heard what Jesus was saying. And he heard him and he said, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing. I hear what you're saying, Jesus. Go ahead and do it again. But I'm telling you, no, it, it doesn't work. But Simon proved he wasn't just hearing, he was listening. Because listen to what, G, what Simon said after that. But at your word, I will let down the net. When we listen to the Lord, when he is leading us and we're listening, it requires us to action. It calls us to do something that doesn't make sense. It goes against every thought in our mind. It goes against what we think is right. And therefore, if we're going to listen, it leads us to our second requirement, which is submission. We need to be submissive to the Lord. And to li last week we talked about Jesus is the now. And if Jesus is the now, we are to live a life of submission. Simon demonstrated this submission by obeying what Jesus had asked him to do. Even when it went against the previous result. As we mentioned just a moment ago, obedience to Jesus, listening to him and being submissive to him. Sometimes it, it doesn't make sense to do what jesus asks us to do and oftentimes it doesn't make sense because it feels like it goes against the grain it feels like it goes against what the world says and so that tells me something else it tells me that if it if what jesus asks us to do doesn't make sense because it somewhat goes against what the world says then the question becomes are we following the world more are we have adopted the ways of the world and we have adopted what they want and how they should process things and not take the time to listen to the Lord and what he wants us to do? We must be submissive to the master. Simon recognized Jesus as the one to submit to. And as, G as Simon submitted himself to Jesus, Jesus showed him that his, his life has a greater purpose. There's more to life than just whatever Simon was. He wasn't just catching fish anymore. Jesus said, you know what? You've been catching fish, but guess what? Because you're submissive and you're going to obey, now you're. I'm going to lead you to something greater than you could even imagine. I know that doesn't make sense that you're going to go catch a man. I'm sure in Simon's mind, he's thinking, I don't have a rod big enough to catch a man. It doesn't make sense, but yet that's what Jesus called Simon to do. Submission doesn't come natural. It doesn't come easily to us. It takes effort and sacrifice. But we submit because we are listening to the Lord. And when we're listening to the Lord and we're submissive to him, it requires the last requirement is humility. It requires us to lay aside our thoughts, our ways. And it requires us to receive his thoughts and his ways. In Isaiah 55, we read, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts higher than yours. It's a real gentle way of the Lord saying, I am smarter than you, so stop pretending 
to think that you're smarter than me. But yet we act in such a way, without humility, we act in such a way that we don't need God. We don't need to submit to God. We don't need to listen to God when we live for ourselves. But ourselves, we put to death our desires, our wants. And we submit to the way of the Father because we've listened to him. We receive his thoughts. We receive his ways. We receive what the Lord wants to do. Maybe it's becoming the theme of my life, but it's the phrase, get out of the way. Get out of the way what God wants to do and how God wants to lead. And maybe the problem with leading and following Jesus is not because of the things that you're not, uh, maybe the problem is that you're not following Jesus is because you're in the way of that very thing. You have placed and elevated yourself above what Jesus thinks, and you cannot follow the Lord because you're not listening anymore. You are not submissive to him, and you certainly do not have a spirit of humility. Those are the requirements when it comes to Jesus. I want to close our time by talking about what following Jesus does. What does it do when we follow the Lord? We have to go back to our text and out. I am the way, the truth, and the life. The first thing that Jesus provides when we follow him is the way. Je when Jesus leads, he leads us on a path. That path is narrow and is hard to find, but it is straight. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide, and the way is Leads to destruction, and those who enter by are many. For the gate is narrow, and the way that is hard that leads to life, and those who find it are few. If we are going to follow Jesus, Jesus himself recognized the difficulty in doing so. He said, if you want to just go to be led to destruction, that's you, anyone can find that. It's very easy to do. Many find themselves on the path that leads to destruction. And you have to ask yourself, am I on that path? No, I'm not. I'm not on that path. But Jesus said, here's the qualification, verse 14 of Matthew chapter 7, for the gate is narrow and the way is, that leads to life, it's hard. And those who find it are few. When we follow Jesus, he says, I will make your path straight. I, you will find me and the way to life will, you'll find it. It's not, matter of actually searching for it anymore it's not a matter of trying to discover where the straight path is it's a matter of claiming jesus it's a matter of receiving him as the way but jesus did not say that living the way was going to be easy and maybe that's why some of us have a difficult time finding the narrow path maybe some of us choose the wide path because it's safe comfortable it's what we know we're going to stick to that. We're not going to deviate from the wide path because I just want to keep it there. And we're afraid to follow that narrow path. We're afraid to follow Jesus into the way because, again, like we said earlier, we're afraid of what that might mean. We're afraid of what Jesus might call us to do. What Jesus might call us to surrender and give up. Following Jesus as the way not easy but it is the one that is straight and as jesus is the way and he provides the way when jesus leads the way he provides he leads us that's where he's leading us to him to jesus that's the goal to be with jesus it's all about him when Jesus leads, he does not lead you to more things and more doings. He leads you to him. When Jesus leads, he does not lead you to feel horrible and feel downright pathetic. He leads you to him. And he says, I take your sins and I wipe them as far as the east is from the west. They're done. They're no more. I forgive it. Because he leads us to himself. He is the way. Jesus also provides the truth. 
When Jesus leads, he gives us truth. And we know that truth sets us free from sin. We know that truth is all that we need. As he says in Matthew 6, seek first my kingdom, seek truth, and and all these things will be added to you. When Jesus leads, it is our goal to find the truth. Now, we live a life where we want answers. We want to know why. We want to know why that happened. We want to know the answer to this. We want to know the answer to that. And we spend a lot of time in our lives wrestling through this idea of trying to figure out what the answer is, and we bypass the truth. There's a difference in my mind between the answer and the truth. When we're looking for an answer, we're just looking for some kind of fact, something to take our faith and kind of defaithify it. Right? To make it, you know, I, I think there's a reason why some things God doesn't reveal because he wants us to act in faith. But if, we, if he leads us, as we follow him, and he leads us to the truth, he leads us to himself, who is the truth. You see the difference there? He leads us to him. A number of years ago, in a, in a disciple-making relationship I had with one of our college uh, young men, we're going through a, a book that I absolutely love. I, th- I think it's just one of, the, one of my top books. And, and as we were going chapter through chapter, we met every Monday morning, uh, and we would talk through this book. He, we'd read a chapter time, and there's a lot of this book and a lot of heavy things. And, and, and it, it took, uh, the book focuses on the Jewish culture and kind of how Jesus, it kind of brings light to it and kind of reinvigorated the scripture. It kind of brought new life to what Jesus said and why he said it. And it's just a, a fantastic book. And so there's this one point in this young man, he's an, an engineering uh, mind. Uh, and he, he likes to have answers. He's a mathematician and he, he needed to have things black and white. And I said, I, I sat across the table from him, and as in the, the particular chapter that we're on, we're, we're bringing some of these things up, and I looked at him, and I said, hey, are you going to be okay knowing that there isn't an answer you're wondering? And are you o- going to be okay with the fact that you may never find an answer? And his chair was kind of tilted a little bit. It wasn't perpendicular to the table. It's tilted a little bit. His glasses were a little bit like this. I, I'm before. And his arms were kind of crossed, but kind of not. And his, his legs were extended and crossed. And he just sat there and looked at the floor. What seemed to be like five minutes. It probably was a, a, a solid 60 seconds, which is a long time. And he just sat there. And he, he, I didn't say anything. I, I actually, I just started doing something else because he's wrestling through some thoughts. He finally looked up at me and goes, I think so. I think so. But he said, it's going to take me time. I said, oh, absolutely, it's going to take you time. But in that moment, he started to realize that he didn't need to have answers for everything in his life. He started to realize that all he needed was Jesus. And I know that's cliche to say, but it's true. He started to understand that instead of trying to find the reasons why something happened, He just needed to have Jesus. He needed to follow Jesus, and he will follow Jesus to whatever ends he needs to. And he knows that in the process of following Jesus, as Jesus is the truth, answers will no longer be needed. Do you spend a lot of time looking for answers that cannot be found? Are you looking to solve something that isn't solvable? And you struggle, and it has actually turned you away from the Lord. The Lord says, I am the truth. That's all you need. And when we receive Jesus as the truth, again, like I said, answers are no longer needed. They're no longer needed. Lastly, Jesus, not, he provides the way, he provides the truth, and as we read here in, in John chapter 14, hides the life. When Jesus leads, when he is our leader, he gives and provides life. John 10, 10, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy, but I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Jesus further said in John chapter 6, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world 
is my flesh. Jesus provides himself as the life. He says, I am the life. Come to me with everything that you've got. And I'll provide life. When we follow Jesus, and I believe that we want to have life, I, I believe that that's something we think about a lot, is, is, is life eternal. And as we said earlier, you're going to follow one of two ways. You're going to follow the world to death, or you're going to follow Jesus into life. When it comes to following Jesus and he provides life, This life that Jesus tells us about, it does come with a cost. It comes with a very high cost, one that's very significant. And if you're unwilling to pay this cost, you will be on that path that leads to destruction. That's the truth. If you do not pay this price, then And Jesus said the cost is this, Matthew chapter 8. Now when Jesus saw a crowd around him, he gave orders to go over to the other side. And a scribe came up and said to him, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Another of his disciples said to him, Lord, let me... First, go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, follow me and leave the dead to bury their own dead. Pretty harsh words from a savior. But he was saying, if you want to follow me, if you want to know the way, you want to know the truth, you want to know the life, then the cost to follow me is your life. That's what it costs to follow the Lord. It means that you give up control. It means that you surrender any idea that you know how to do it. It means that you turn over everything that you are, everything that you think you are, to the Lord. It means living by listening to the Lord. It means that you live submissively to Him, and it means that you have an attitude of humility when it comes to the Lord. I don't believe that Jesus is, maybe he is, but I don't believe that Jesus is calling you now to go home or, or to declare after the service is over, hey, yard sale, my house, everything is a nickel. I don't think anyone is going to do that. I don't know that Jesus calls you to give up your material possessions, but I do believe that Jesus is asking for you. And if he's got then you understand that your material possessions are not yours anyhow. The cost to follow Jesus is your life. Are you willing to pay that price? Are you willing to follow him? He said, hey, listen, foxes have holes, birds have their nests. I don't know where I'm going to sleep, but you want to follow still? Following Jesus doesn't make a lot of sense. But it's the only way that leads to life. Is he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. We need, uh, I don't want to say need. When we follow Jesus, he gives us himself, who is the way, who is the truth, who is the life. And as Simon understood, or I don't know if he understood in that moment in the boat, but when Jesus said, now you will not be catching fish, you'll be catching men. We understand that when we follow Jesus, there is a greater picture. There's a, something bigger than what we can see. Oftentimes, we get blinded, don't we? We get blinded to what the Lord wants in our life because we're too focused on what we think could be. Our vision is skewed. Some, somehow, we're not, we don't have the eternal perspective we need to follow Jesus. We have an earthly perspective that limits us. But when we listen 
to what he asks and we submit in humility to what he asks. And when he leads us and he gives us himself as the way, the truth, and the life, as he does all these things, our perspectives turn and change. When we follow the Lord, our lives change. Who is Jesus? He is our leader. We need that leader. You, I, am not a leader. We are not the ones to lead. It must and only be Jesus. This morning, as you hear the word, as you hear maybe him, the spirit speaking to you, uh, Christians, maybe this morning he is calling you once again to follow. Maybe there are things, areas of your life where Jesus is not the leader. Maybe it's an attitude. Maybe it's a grudge. Maybe it's a possession or a right. And you have not, uh, Jesus isn't leading there. Christians, do not uh, haste. Jesus wants to lead. And I know it doesn't make sense, but Jesus says, let that go. And Jesus will provide that. I believe that in this room, if we truly were following the Lord wholeheartedly, without any question, none of us would be sitting here. Walking with the Lord, following him is not easy. We need to be reminded of these truths over and over again. And Jesus yet again this morning says, hey, I want to lead you because I am the way the truth, and the life. I am the good shepherd. I want to give you life. Life that is eternal. Only you know the areas in your life where Jesus is not leading. And the unbeliever this morning, Jesus again, he wants to wipe away your sin. He has. He wants you to know a life with him. He wants to lead you to something greater than you could understand. During our, our last hymn, I didn't ask them to, but I'm sure they'll be okay with it. Our elders will be up front, and if you'd like to come pray with one of them, they'll take you to, it's kind of hard to pray right up front, but they'll lead you to the side so that you can pray with one of them. Uh, this morning, uh, doesn't, you can come to them with whatever. It doesn't need to be anything specific. Just if you want prayer, whatever it might be, you're welcome to come during the last song. Jesus wants to lead. Let us uh, Father, this morning, you know, as we contemplate um, leading, it seems uh, elementary to follow a leader. It makes a lot of sense. It's a game that probably a lot of us have played. And uh, yet, Lord, we recognize even in the children's sermon this morning that it is in our nature uh, to fight that leading, uh, to want to go against it, to not listen, to not be submissive, not be humble. Lord, would you call us back to you again this morning? Would you call us back to your leadership as we follow you? wherever you might lead us. And Lord, even in the moments where it doesn't make a lot of sense to follow, remind us, Lord, that your ways and your thoughts are higher than ours and that, Lord, you have a much a greater purpose, much greater uh, picture than we could see. And so, the Lord, the scripture must be true when you said that trust in you, follow our heart and soul and mind, and don't trust in our ways, it must be true, Lord, that then you will make our path straight. So, Lord, I pray that I would be a follower of you. That my 
fixed only on you, nothing else, but only you, Jesus. Forgive me for on anything but you. And I think of myself first and primary, Lord, forgive me for being fixated on me. And Lord, you've called me to be fixated on you. We want you to lead us, God. Jesus, in your name do we pray.